Hey guys, Ryan here from HookTheory.com and welcome to the final part of our first songwriting video series where we are writing a song from start to finish uh, from scratch in HookPad. Um, this is part four. If you haven't seen parts one, two, and three, I would definitely encourage you guys to check them out. There's uh, some links below this video just so that you're caught up. But uh, basically where we are is we are scoring a short piece for a film. It's going to be um, featuring a tenor saxophone and uh, we have already gone over the chord progression, writing of the melody, uh, we've talked about how do we arrange this music onto real instruments, and finally in this part we are going to be taking our composition, uh, exporting it from Hookpad, throwing it into Logic Pro X, which is the DAW that I'll be using, and uh, we are going to make some real music. So um, while technically this part isn't, um, is it, it's not technically songwriting, it's obviously a very important part of the, uh, the music production process, so um, I thought that it'd be good for us to include this. Um, all right, so let's get started. Okay, so let's pick up where we left off in part three. So here I have our project open with um, our bass melody here. And remember, we adjusted the rhythm of the chords a little bit for the piano uh, by adding these rests and adding some syncopation. And what we're going to do is export this as a MIDI file. Now, for those of you who are not um, Plus members, um, I understand that this feature is not available. So we will have this mini uh, file available on the website that is linked below. All right, so I'm going to download this. And then I'm going to take this file and go into Logic Pro, um, where I have just kind of a simple project open here. I'm just going to plop this right in. So what happens when you import a MIDI file into Logic is um, essentially each track, each MIDI track, um, gets put onto a different Logic Pro track. And when you export MIDI from Hookpad, essentially what Hookpad does is it creates one track uh, per track in the mix tool here. So in this case, um, our first track is going to be uh, voice one, which is our tenor saxophone melody. The second voice is going to be our the second track is going to be our bass melody. The third is going to be the piano, and remember we muted the uh, piano bass, so we don't have a track for that. Okay, so if we go back over to Logic, um, as we can see, there's three tracks here. Um, the first one is the tenor saxophone melody, second is the bass melody, and then we have our piano. So in this uh, simple project that I've opened up here, I've created a few tracks. So we have uh, some pianos here. This is just the standard kind of I think, Bosendorfer piano. Uh, got this uh, upright jazz bass, and then just kind of a standard uh, drum set uh, called Bluebird. So uh, I can see here that we have a slightly different ordering. So this is supposed to be the piano. So I'm going to just kind of move this out of the way. And then this one is the bass. So I'm going to plop this down here and then move the piano back. Okay, so we're all set here. Okay, so now that we've imported this in, um, let's play a little bit of this just to see how it sounds. Okay, not bad. So it sounds actually pretty similar to it did um, to how it did in Hookpad except for now we have this nice uh, upright jazz bass instead of our uh, piano bass in Hookpad. Um, so one thing that I just noticed right now is um, we have this octave a little too low. So if you click on um, any sort of MIDI region like this, um, if you double click on it, it'll basically open up um, this little MIDI editor down here. Or if you want a little more space, you can hit Command-4. And that'll kind of open up the MIDI editor into a separate window like this. Um, so uh, one thing that I noticed is that this bass melody is a little low. Um, and the reason why this happened is that when we were in our mix tool, um, we actually put this down an octave. So um, we, we didn't have to put this in the, the bottom octave. But this E flat is actually lower than the lowest note on a bass. Um, the lowest note is actually this E right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab all of these E flats and we're just going to move them up an octave because uh, obviously we want um, the bass to be playing notes that actually exist on the bass. So let's drag this up to our E flat. You can see it says D sharp, which is the same as E flat. OK, um, so that's that. Uh, and what else? So 
another thing that you might notice, of course, is that this sounds uh, a little robotic, right? Especially this little piano thing right here. So if I were to click on this, for instance, and I'm going to hit Command 4 again to bring up our MIDI editor, um, I find uh, this little rhythmic figure that we added in to kind of give it uh, some, some rhythmic diversity, this sounds very kind of, uh, it, it just sounds very rigid, right? This, it doesn't sound to me like this is what a real keyboardist would play. Listen, listen to this. Okay, so one thing is that I feel like the whole point of having this kind of uh, this short chord here was to kind of just have it pop. And right now it's not really popping, it kind of just sounds boring. Um, so one thing we can do is we can just shorten it a little bit. So I'm going to grab this and while we're at it actually, you can just, oops, if we hold shift, we can actually grab all of the times that we do this. Um, and let's just shorten this a little bit. Okay, it's going to sound just a little more natural. And uh, the other thing is that, you know, when we're playing this kind of like a smooth kind of jazzy piece like this, um, we're not going to want to play this super straight. You know, we're going to kind of want to play this a little swingier. So Logic makes this actually really easy to do this. Um, what we can do is I'm just going to select all of the notes here and I'm going to use the time quantization tool, which is right here. And what we can do is I'm going to put this on eighth notes first. Um, and this isn't going to do anything because, uh, you know, we exported this from Hookpad and uh, Hookpad obviously put in exact, you know, ex exact timing. So this is already on eighth notes, but we're going to use this swing slider here. Um, and you'll see as I adjust this swing slider, what it's doing is it's moving these notes, right? And what it's doing is rather than lining it up directly on eighth notes, it's kind of lining it up on swing eighth notes. Um, and when you bring this slider all the way to 100, it becomes kind of an eighth note triplet feel. So this is a little hard to hear probably because we don't have a context with the drum, but I'll just play a little bit of this and we can see if you guys can hear the difference. So in addition to these short notes being a little later, also um, these longer notes that kind of hit on an offbeat, like this this one and this one, they uh, they were also moved over. So this is going to kind of give us a little more of a swingy and natural feel. And already, you know, the uh, adding that swing and these shorter chords here, this already sounds a lot better. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is um, this bass um, also kind of sounds a little rigid. And if we take a look at this, so again, I'm going to open up our little MIDI region editor. Um, you'll see that we can't use that same uh, swing trick that we did before because uh, these notes are all on, uh, on, on primary beats, right? So these are all kind of two beat or one beat uh, notes. So if we swing them, when you, you do these swing eights, it really is only adjusting um, the off beats. Um, so one thing we can do to kind of give this bass a swingier feel is I'm actually going to open up, let's see, the scissors tool here. So um, just to remind you guys, uh, in Logic, um, the left side of this, this, these two buttons here, this corresponds to what tool you're using when you click. And the right one is what happens when you hold down uh, command and click. So it's kind of an easy way to get two tools that you're going to use fairly frequently. Um, to be both kind of simultaneously accessible. So what I'm going to do here is um, instead of just playing these quarters, what we can do is I'm actually going to give us kind of a little offbeat note here. And um, this is kind of, it's clipping at the 16th here, but um, we're going to actually quantize this uh, to kind of swing eights anyway, so this doesn't really matter. So rather than having just kind of plain old quarter, you know, or I guess this is really a half note, half note, half note, half note, half note. What we're going to do is we're just going to add another little note in here and we can put this into a swing feel and it'll help the bass kind of uh, feel a little more swingy. Now, we don't want to do this everywhere uh, because that'll get a little re repetitive, but you know, we can just, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, 
I'll just kind of show you guys what this will sound like. So um, we can do maybe a few places like this. Um, let's see. So I'll do a couple more. Maybe as this descends like that. Okay, so if I just play this straight, this is gonna sound a little funny because this is not a swing feel right yet. This is kind of um, a little too short. Okay, but you get the idea. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing as before. I'm gonna grab these guys. All of these short notes. Okay, and we're gonna basically give them a more swing feel. So I'm gonna change this to eighth notes and I'm going to adjust the swing. And now let's play this. Okay, so what's going on there? Um, basically, this particular sound font, when the bass lets off of um, its note, it kind of makes a little sound. And the reason we're kind of hearing double clicks is that if you kind of hover over this first note, you can see that we, um, th these first notes are a little too long. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to make this a little more continuous. So I have all of these short notes uh, highlighted. So I'm going to stretch out their end beats to kind of line up with the next beat. And then I'm going to change all of the kind of notes that go with these short notes, the ones right before each of them. And we are going to adjust their lengths so that they line up kind of with the start of, of the short notes like this. Okay, so let's play this. Okay, so that sounds a little better. So you guys get the basic idea. And again, this kind of just you know gives the, the bass just a little more of a swingy, more natural feel. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of do that a few more times uh, to the rest of our piece, but I won't make you guys sit through that because it's a little time consuming. Okay, so now I basically uh, just did that same thing to a few other of the notes in the second half of this bass line. Okay, so let's move on. Um, the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to add some drums. So um, back in the day, uh, basically, we, here we have a drum set and I'll hit record. I have a MIDI controller attached so I can play some notes. Um, so these are actually all um, recorded drum samples and they're uh, super high quality and they sound really great. Um, but you know, it, it used to be that um, we could basically use the keyboard to play along and create our own drum beats, um, which is fine, except for, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not really a drummer. Um, I can listen to some things, some songs, and, and try to figure out what they're doing. Um, but really, like, there's a lot of drummer intuition that goes with hearing music and kind of knowing what the right thing is to play. Um, and a lot of us just don't have that. Um, but with Logic Pro X, they have this new feature um, called... I actually don't know what it's called. I think it might just be called Drummer. Um, but basically what you can do is you can add a drum track, um, kind of a special drum track up here. It's just called Drummer. And when you do that, you notice that uh, like here in my Bluebird uh, Drummer, there's no record. That's because um, it's basically like a smart drummer. So if I right click on the track area here, I can say um, Create Drummer Region. And I can slide this over. Oops. And then I can extend this. So what this basically does is it it uses um, some kind of basic drum patterns uh, that you know sound pretty good, and um, it kind of fits it to your piece in the correct time. So if you double click on the drummer region, it 
comes up with this a drummer panel. And I will kind of move this over so we can see this a little better. Um, so basically what you can do is you can kind of pick some different styles. Um, you can decide kind of which drums you want. You can say, oh, I want like, you know, hi-hat in and a snare and a kick drum. Um, and you can put in some details about, you know, basically how complex you want it, uh, how soft or loud you want it, and um, what kind of, how many fills you want, uh, the number of times your hi-hat and your kick and your snare hit. It's actually pretty, it's pretty cool. So I definitely would recommend you guys uh, playing around with this. Um, here, I'll just show you a little bit. So for instance, if I solo this track, um, if we just put in this kind of standard, uh, fairly loud and complex uh, drum pattern um, with Kyle playing. It's kind of like a, you know, kind of a rockish pattern. Um, now for our uh, piece, of course, we want something that's a little more on the simple and soft side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this little circle down to something a little more simple and, 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 and soft. And then um, I actually don't want, we could drag these sliders down to make this a little more simple. And it uh, sounds something like this. Okay, so, um, and again, what we're gonna wanna do is um, probably adjust the swing. So this right now is being played very straight. Um, we put it kind of a swing feel into our, uh, to our other tracks, so let's adjust the swing. Uh, now, something that, that's important to note for this drum swing is that basically 50% means no swing, and 100% means there's so much swing that the the offbeat is basically back on the onbeat again. So so you know so far that there's also kind of no swing. Um, that's very different than the MIDI quantization region. Remember, if I click on this and I go back to our MIDI region, the swing actually goes from zero to 100 where zero means no swing, and 100% actually means um, kind of a triplet feel. So zero in this quantization um, swing really corresponds to 50% in the drummer, and 100 of the swing actually corresponds to 66% in the drummer. So since we use kind of 100% swing, when we go to our drummer region here, oops, let's open this up again. Um, I'm going to set the swing to 66. So this is like a triplet feel. Okay, so let's close this and I'm gonna unsolo this and let's hear how this sounds. Okay, so this is actually sounding like some real music now. Um, and I think that it's time to put in the final piece, which is our tenor saxophone. So um, remember, we exported our sheet music uh, using the sheet music export option in Hookpad. Um, and again, this is a plus feature, but the PDF of this sheet music is available uh, at the link below if you guys want to check that out. And we will be back soon. All right, so we are back and uh, just finished our recording session, which was um, a little low budget. I, we did it in uh, actually a conference room um, with not the greatest acoustics, um, but it took us about three to four hours. And um, what you're seeing here is a composite of about maybe 10 or 11 takes, I think. We, well, it's a composite of maybe like three takes, but we did about 11 takes total. So the tenor saxophone player, um, who's really amazing, um, basically took the melody we wrote um, as a skeleton. So he's, you know, he's basically playing everything that we wrote, but you know, adjusting the rhythms here or there, or adding a couple little frills um, just for for style. Um, but we will uh, populate this melody in here from Hookpad, uh, so you guys can kind of follow along with um, both what we wrote and what his uh, interpretation was.
All right, so I hope you guys really enjoyed that. I know I certainly did. Um, and I hope it was useful to kind of see this whole process from the very beginning with our chord progression and hook pad, building up that melody, the bass, the keyboard, going into Logic, and then um, having it all basically fit together in the end. Um, so I'm going to post a, a WAV file to this recording if you guys want to download that and put it in your own projects to kind of uh, play around with it. Um, and I know that there's you know some parts that we had to kind of uh, skip, like the actual uh, recording of the tenor saxophone and some of the processing that we did to that. Um, perhaps we can kind of put that into a later video. And also, um, I recorded a kind of a counter melody to that uh, to this piece, and um, to kind of just fill in the areas where the sax isn't playing with some keyboard. Um, and I will play that for you guys right now too. Um, and if you're interested on how um, I wrote this, uh, we can kind of put this into another video too. So I will leave you with this and um, thanks for watching.